Hello and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. I would like to apologize again for being away for such a long time. It's just I had to take care of a few things, but anyways, now I'm back and I plan to continue offering you reviews and news about quadcopters and drones. Today I'll bring you a light review and unboxing of a couple of FPV racers that uh, come ready to fly. I'm talking about the KingCon 210 GT FPV racers. There are three versions of these racers being sold now. One comes with a CC3D, one with an ACE32 and the other one with an F3 racing flight controller. I have over here with me the CC3D version and the F3 version. Today we will take a look at the CC3D version and in the next video at the F3 version. Just so you know, there are more differences than just the flight controller, but more about that later. Although uh, currently I have only come across the RTF or ready to fly version, I think we will soon see the PMP versions becoming available as many of you have your own transmitters and are certainly not against saving a few bucks. But those of you getting started with flying quads will rejoice as these quads come ready to fly right out of the box. The only thing you need I think is a battery, I think it's not included with the kit. Uh, what I will do next is uh, cover all that is included uh, in the box and then we will go outside for a short flying session to see how the KingCon 210 GT uh, CC3D version performs. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the box. We will immediately see the instructions manual and uh, not that it matters much, but this manual is actually printed on very nice paper offering colored images and detailed description of various components that make up this FPV racer. Right under you can see the, the racer pretty much and all the components properly organized and you might have noticed as well that you get heaps of props with this uh, quad. Just like you saw a moment ago, this is the instruction manual and it will basically cover the features of all three versions, the CC3D, NACE32 and the F3 Racing. Uh, then, as I mentioned before, we get heaps of props with this, with this quad, sorry. These are 5 inches props and they are made of a good plastic but they are, are rather thin uh, and you will see that later. Then you got the USB uh, to plug the flight controller, in this case the CC3D, to your computer and adjust your settings, uh, I mean to your liking, which you certainly be doing with this quad. This little component that you can see over here is a USB module to program your ESCs and that it should be running BL Heli firmware. And then you get some extra components uh, such as these sticky pads and packing straps that can certainly come handy. Some nice things that, uh, that are included here. Some extra wiring that come with the FPV transmitter, although you don't need, really need to worry because it comes already uh, set up for you. And a bind plug for your receiver that I will show you later. And of course the transmitter, in this kit is the old famous and classic Flysky, uh, probably uh, one of the most used transmitters in RTF kits these days. A mushroom FPV antenna covered by a silico silicone cover that I really appreciate as most of my antennas have lost the upper part, uh, protective plastic, so this silicone cover prevents this from happening and also acts as a shock absorber. And finally we have over here the beautiful King Kong 210 GT FPV Razor, very clean built and all nicely uh, packed with a 3 millimeter carbon uh, fiber plate at the bottom. The frame without all the components weighs around 320 grams. Just as the name indicates, this fellow belongs to the 210 category, so it's considerably smaller than the Falcon 250. The King Kong 210 GT comes equipped with a 2300 kV King Kong motors, and as you can see, the motors come protected by these uh, red plastic capsules. The FPV camera here on the front is 800 TVL uh, CMOS camera uh, with a 2.8 lens uh, and an aperture of 2. The camera itself weighs 16.7 grams and you can of course select between PAL and NTSC. The ESCs in this quad are just 12 amps. But, uh, which is actually considerably less than the F3 version comes with. And then we got the strip of LED lights on the back, protected by a plastic cover. I think these lights will suffer no damage here. And then there's an aperture on the upper carbon uh, fiber plate that you can see uh, for the power supply cables that will prevent them from you know, being uh, all loose. And, and then here you can see the FPV transmitter, 40 channel 200 milliwatt FPV transmitter. Uh, here's a quick lateral view that will allow you to get a better perspective of the way the components were arranged within the frame and everything seems accessible and this is the other side again a pretty clever arrangement 
and the right space uh, for this little mini CC 3D flight controller. In case you have not noticed, you can see here on the upper section the FlySky receiver. Then right under we have the mini CC 3D flight controller. Then the USB port of the flight controller that can be easily accessed from the side so you will need to struggle like in other setups. Then on the lowest level we will see the back or circuit board that provides the right voltage to all the components. These are the wires that supply the video transmitter and the yellow wires video coming from the front FPV camera. The 3mm uh, frame has four rubber structures at the bottom that will prevent the frame from directly touching the ground and could make landing on hard surfaces less stressing for the frame. As you have noticed, the bottom plate is one single unit, meaning that if you break one arm, you will need to replace the whole structure. I'm not a very big fan of these kind of frames, but I must say that the plate is much thicker than the rest of the body. I'm a bit worried about this part that I have highlighted here. There will be a lot of stress here where the screws and the openings are, and this could cause the lower plate to rupture in that area. But well, time will tell where this frame can take some crack crashes and uh, still survive. I will be looking forward for uh, more feedback from people that have tried the frame. Both antennas coming from the receiver have been secured with packing straps to the lateral section of the frame and uh, if you're not happy obviously with having the antennas there you can change that and here we have a front view of the antennas and they're inside these protected tubules made of a rubbery plastic to avoid any damage in case of a crash and you know you probably be crashing this this racer i want to uh, really quickly show you uh, some differences between the frame of the c3d version and the f3 version as you can see the frames are not identical there are clear differences when it comes to the shape the frame on the right belongs to the f3 racing version and the frame on the left is the cc3d version uh, that i have been showing you until now you can also notice that in terms of visual differences, the motors have different colors, although they're pretty much the same. Uh, I have attached uh, my Mobius to the King Kong uh, 210 GT, but to tell you the truth, this made the quad kind of a front heavy. I thought the battery would compensate, but I still felt a little bit way too uh, front heavy. And now I'm going to talk about, uh, well, I won't be covering actually stability because most of these quads come already tuned in such a way that you can pretty much let go of the transmitter and they remain in place. The initial factory settings greatly favor beginners. Uh, I want to show you directly some flying. Now please note that the only forest battery I had uh, burned to ashes. So uh, now I'm flying using 3S batteries. With the factory settings, power coming from it, uh, well, I mean, there's not a lot of power actually right away coming from, from, the, uh, from the motors. Also remember this is running at 12 amp PSCs, uh, so don't expect it to have the thrust of the HN Falcon 250, uh, even with a 4S battery. It's still fun to fly, although like uh, I was saying, uh, the Mobius was kind of making it feel a little bit front heavy. Now here I'm flying at a very close range, so no problem whatsoever with the FPV, but I did lead, do, I'm sorry, I did a linear test with it and I started to lose signal at approximately 400 meters, but that was using regular antennas. It should be possible to squeeze more distance using better antennas. I took a bit the settings in the second flying mode, but it felt a little bit too jerky and over responsive to my liking. It takes some trial and error for each setup to, uh, I mean, for you to find the right settings that work best for you. Uh, you can pretty much, if you have patience and time, you can start playing a bit with the settings until you find the sweet spot in which you feel comfortable. In the initial setup, there was almost no difference between flying mode one and two. And uh, then mode uh, three is rate. In case you want to know, the flying modes are assigned to the switch, uh, the SWC switch, which is a three position switch located on the right side of the transmitter. The way I see it, this version should be great for beginners and intermediate pilots like me. If you already are a pretty awesome pilot, <laughs> you might uh, want uh, to get a different, uh, quite of a different caliber, maybe featuring the F3 Racing uh, or perhaps the F4, yeah, because I, I heard it's coming out already. 
Then uh, to conclude, I would like to state that I welcome this new kit uh, to the market. I certainly appreciate manufacturers coming with affordable FPV razors, either ready to fly or pair and fly, as they can help many people get started in the hobby. Uh, if I can list what I liked about this kit, well, I would say price currently under 200 bucks. I'm talking about the CC3D version, the clean build, uh, all the components pretty much accessible. So the components should be easy to replace and most components are already available. Uh, the fact uh, that it comes with heaps of spare props uh, and also the FPV antenna comes with a protective silicone cover, a nice, nice touch. And the front camera has a decent resolution, 800 TVL, and you can easily adjust uh, its angle. What I didn't like, uh, although some of you might disagree, uh, is that lower carbon fiber plate is one single unit, so if one arm breaks, you'll need to replace the whole unit, and that's time consuming. The ESCs could have been uh, 20 amps, I think, uh, like the ones that come in the F3 racing version. Not a deal breaker, though. Uh, this will conclude my br brief review of the King Kong 210 GT CC3, uh, CC3D version. Remember that I'll be sorry, soon testing the F3 racing version. I will certainly appreciate any comments or feedback about this review. Don't hesitate to drop me some questions and correct um, any silly thing I might have said. After all, we all benefit from that. If you're interested in the topic of drones and quads, please don't hesitate and subscribe to my channel for the latest news and reviews directly from China. Uh, I have an exclusive review coming of another FPV smart quad packed with sensors and functions that you might like and I hope to see you all in my next video.